you have a lot of experience with guns, obviously, you know, <clears throat> they were part of your job for years and years and years. You used them in war. When you hear people, I mean, do you see some of the stuff they say on the media where, you know, a reporter will be like, here's an AR-15. It shoots 30 rounds a second. Or, you know, there's the famous one from a year ago where they claimed one shot from a 5.56 can take a human head clean off. Biden said a 9 millimeter can remove your lungs from your body with one shot. What, what do you think about people who clearly have no idea what they're talking about but just love to talk about how guns need to be banned? Oh, they need to shut the hell up. Um, you know, they talk about disinformation and misinformation. It's like, hey, first educate yourself. Um, educate yourself, know what you're talking about, and then and then come to the table to talk about. It. Um, that that to me, a person like that represents an agenda, right? They could care less about educating themselves. They're they're sticking to the party line, uh, talking points. Um, they don't really care, um, and so they're just gonna you know throw things out there and then you know accuse everyone else of creating misinformation and disinformation and all those things. Um, but I would tell people, it's like, hey, if you want to talk about something, especially guns in general, great. Let's have a conversation, but at least educate yourself so you know what you're talking about. I agree 100%. Just for fun, when you were in the military, did you have a firearm that you particularly really liked or did exchange one for the other? It didn't matter. Um. You know, when, when I got to the special mission unit, uh, we had uh, sidearms, um, and we carried uh, 1911. It was a Caspian frame with some, you know, custom internal parts. Man, I loved that thing. Um, I didn't really shoot a whole lot of pistol up to that point, so having gone through the course and learning how to properly shoot a pistol and, and everything, um, man, I just love that 1911 so much. I had an opportunity to buy it back. Um Man, what probably around 2009 or 2010, um, and I passed it up because at the time, like two grand for a, a pistol was a little too much. But looking back now, I like to just kick myself in the ass because, um, you know, that's like a family heirloom, you know, that you pass down. So I have an affinity for uh, the 1911, um, um, so much so that uh, the guys over at Staccato. You know, they, they had the 2011 and uh, bought the Staccato XL, and that thing reminds me so much of my 1911 that I carried for years. So, yeah, I would say the 1911. Uh, for me, like an AR is an AR. Um, yeah, pistols. I like that. I, the 1911, especially the real, like, World War II, the old school ones, they're the coolest. They're the coolest things in the world. I remember when, so we made the transition from the 1911 to the Glock. Uh, I can't remember exactly what year it was, 2007-ish. Um, and so a lot, a lot of the older guys, um, I wasn't so attached to it. Um, uh, in a way, yes, but it was like, hey, you guys need to turn in your 1911s. And, you know, that old phrase, you can pry it from my cold, dead fingers. <laughs> some some of the uh, the older guys at the units um, kind of felt that way, and honestly, you know, looking back, um, it was a bit nostalgic, and I wish we'd at least kept one and kind of locked, but didn't turn old. That, that's that's awesome. 